So I would sit there and I, all I kept doing was asking myself, like, man, if money wasn't an option, if whatever was, I, whatever I was to dream up was to actually happen for me, like, what would you do? And I remember like going through down like the list and it took me three days to get here, mm. but it was like I was going down the list. I was like, oh, I can be a, uh, uh, I can go back to med school. I can become a lawyer. Like all the things that people would be acceptable with. But then it was like, I was challenging myself. Like, bro, I can do something else. Like, what do I really want to do? And then I came to that conclusion of like, I want to travel the world, help people and get paid to do it. And that's when like stuff just like opened up. And I was like, oh, I committed like that day that I was going to like get into travel, like I'm gonna figure this out, and so I became like a content creator. Uh, our cousin uh, Savina mm -hmm. actually helped me figure out my uh, niche because people was like, "Oh, you need a niche, you need a niche," and I was like, "I don't know what my niche gonna be." And at that time, I was like, "Well, there's a whole bunch of like black travel folks out here because like, the black travel movement was moving." Mm -hmm. But she was like, "Bro, talk about your experience. Like you're fat and black," and I was like, "You are right. <laughs> I am." And I was like, "I don't know nobody talking about." Shout out to Savina. Come on, shout out to her. <laughs> like I was like, I don't know nobody talking about the plight of being just like a, a plus size person traveling around the world. Yeah. And then I realized I was like one of the only plus size people anywhere, uh, traveling. like traveling. Like, and I was like, "Bro, there's so many Americans that are plus size that ain't." That Travel. Aren't, aren't traveling like that, and they could be. What's up, beautiful people? Jeff Jenkins here. You might recognize me from my show, Never Say Never, with Jeff Jenkins. And what's up, Nyla? We need to talk. What's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of We Need to Talk. I am Nyla Simone, and, you know, as a black American, well, just in general, I got mad cousins. We all got a bunch of cousins. Some cousins you might not know. Now, I just met a cousin about two years ago, and I found out my cousin is actually popping so cuz in town i had to bring him on the on the pod jeff Glad jenkins is in the building what's up? <laughs> what's up beautiful people how are you i'm good i'm good Chilling. i love this like this whole setup is like dope thanks thanks for talking about it can't believe i'm here oh don't do that come on don't do that come i seen on. your profile because i'm at the family reunion they have like the shrine of like me and everything i've done and then next to me i'm like jeff who who, who the hell is Jeff? <laughs> what? And then I, I go on your profile, I see what you do. Mm -hmm. First of all, for those who don't know, you're a world traveler. Mm -hmm. But you also have a show on Nat Geo where mm -hmm. you travel the world. Yeah. I have never seen a black man on TV encouraging travel. So I think it's just very impressive. But, I appreciate and that. And you are one of two in the world, correct? One of three. One of to three. To ever have a... Uh, a national TV show like this, black person have a national TV show like this. That's nuts. It's mind blowing. No pressure or nothing. At but... all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever feel pressure or not? You know, I do. I feel the pressure, but it, it don't like affect. It don't affect me like like that. I'm always a person who likes challenges. Mm. Uh, I always feel like like I have mentors tell me like, dang, it look like you can take on a lot, and I can. So I get excited about knowing that I'm helping. Like if I take myself or remove myself from whatever that challenge or that situation is, that's when I'm like in this place of like now I'm doing this for others and it makes it really easy. I'm curious to know who some of your who some of your mentors are, but before we get into that, I just want to say because I feel like now we're in an age where traveling is deemed cool. We're like before mm -hmm. you wouldn't really see too many people traveling, Come on. but now we're seeing an influx of that. What would you like d say? What's the cause for that? Well, Instagram is the cause for it. Mm. Um, like, it's just that, that whole black travel movement that happened once Instagram came out. So I was traveling before Instagram. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm dating myself. Uh, <laughs> like, when I was in college, I, I went on my first trip. And my first trip when I was 20, first time getting on the airplane was mm. when I was 20, and I went to Japan. Mm. And when I got back from doing this program, like, it's a college program, um, I, like, became the recruiter for the program. And when I tell you I could not get any black kid, like students to like join this program, like I would have to ask like almost over a thousand people just to get like One. 20. Yeah. Yeah, and so, um, and it was like an expense paid trip. So I'm like, bro, you what? Not, now people, not exactly. Like, so now like, I know some people kicking themselves in the foot, yeah. but it was because they had no representation. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people like a lack of uh, like representation matters. A lack of representation only leads uh, or people seeing themselves represented, uh, it'll get them to go out there and do it too. So I feel like the black travel movement started because of social media. That's fire actually. Mm -hmm. But it all has been paid to Japan and people were saying no. I mean, this is other countries too. It wasn't just Japan. Japan, they could go to like Europe. And like when I first went, I think like, um, 
like the World Cup was happening one time, oh, okay. and then the Olympics was happening another time. So even if you was like stationed in like one of the like European spots, like you got to see the World Cup and the Olympics, and like just be a part of the action. I was like, pretty major. Come on, I was like, man, how how awesome was that? But I didn't even know then so what, how big those places were. What made you want to go to Japan first? Like, why that of all places? Uh, because I the day I met one of my friends was the day before she went to Japan, mm. and I was like, like we were both 19 years old. Uh, I just finished my first year of college at FAMU, and it was like the summer. My homeboys, uh, homegirl came over, who's my friend now, Jazz. Like she came over and she was like, oh, I'm going to Japan, and I was like, what? I like a black woman, 19 year old black girl, and yeah. at that time in my head, I was like, bro, you finna go to Japan. Man, chill out. I don't know nobody that do that. Yeah. Who do that? And so she was like, oh man, you can do it too. And so for her just like putting that in my head, like literally from that time I met her to the time that I got into the program, like that's all I kept thinking to myself, like I'm going to Japan. Cause all I kept thinking to myself was like, man, how dope would it be to be in Japan? Like Japan, like and it's, I just kept thinking about it to myself because I was like, I don't know nobody in my family that's been out of the country like yeah. this, uh, unless they was in the military. Like I don't know anybody in my friend group that has done anything in Japan. So I was like, bro, like I don't know if it's, it was one of those like like all uh, like clout chasing kind of things. I don't think that was what it was, yeah. but it was definitely a, a cool like. Hey man, I went to Japan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about because. Um, you're from Florida. Yep. You know, to say some of the craziest people in the world come from come on. Florida. So hey, for you to I'll take it. <laughs> Orange County. So for you to uh, leave and go to Japan, let's talk about the culture shocks. Because, I mean, how I feel like I faced culture shocks even just being in New York since yeah. we're such a, a, yeah. a melting pot. But you actually went over there. Yep. What were some of, like, the top things for you that blew your mind? Oh, man. So, like, getting off the plane. Like, I mean, before we even got off the plane, I remember having that window seat and I could see us like coming in and I could tell right off the dribble that these cars were like smaller. Mm. Like I was like, dang, these cars like like real small. And then you get the man, it's just like all this like hustle and bustle, a lot of movement happening. Cause I, you fly into like uh, Narita or Narita, which is like right outside of J uh, Tokyo. Mm. Uh, but yeah, like you see all, like just how everything, all the signage, all this stuff. But the first thing I didn't think to myself was like, oh, look at the difference. It was more so the first thing I thought of was like, man, the world's small. Like it only took me, it only took me uh, 11 hours to go from Atlanta to to Tokyo. Mm. And I was like, bro, what? I'm like in a whole nother continent, whole nother country. Yeah. And it only took me 11 hours. And I used to go from Orlando to, and then I would go see my dad's family in, in Camden, New Jersey, and that would take 18 hours. So you I was, was like, driving oh. to yeah, Jersey? Yeah, driving, like, driving to Jersey. Oh, I have mercy. Like I told you, I didn't get on my first plane ride oh, until yeah. I was 20. So I was like, bro, it was faster to go to, <laughs> to fucking, Atlanta, yeah. to another continent, than it was to go from Orlando to, I was like, oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm down for like this, this uh, I was gonna say space travel, that's what it felt <laughs> like. But yeah, this like, like plane travel and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. and let's talk about the food. Mm -hmm. I love it. Like, bro, so I always tell people, like, Japan is my favorite country. Like, from it the is? culture. Oh, oh, I love it. I what? love it. Like, from the culture to the tradition and then how they present the food. Mm -hmm. Like, you, like, Japan, it really has this, like, like, everybody falls in line. Like, it's like people just assimilate. Mm -hmm. Like, you get there and you be like, oh, shoot, okay, okay. Like, you what y'all doing? Do. Like, what you doing over there? Okay, like, don't put your chopsticks, don't stick your chopsticks in the thing. So, it's like all these, like, fun things that you can, like, learn when you're over there. But, like, how they present the food every time is, like, they take pride in their work. They take pride in what they present to you. So, like, you can go to a hole in the wall, and that hole in the wall give you some decked out looking, like, Michelin star uh, type type layouts. That's fire. Mm -hmm. And the food good. That's super fire. So, from your first time traveling to getting a show on that geo, like, what happened in that in-between time? I, I kept traveling. Um, I think before I finished college, I wish I stayed in school an extra year. Mm. Uh, I went to 14 different countries within that time, started hitting up Europe. And like Europe is like traveling from country to country in Europe is like traveling from state to state here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how close like countries are there. Uh, I did that and then I became a, a high school choir teacher. Mm. I got my degree in music education and it was like nine years in and I was just like, bruh, I don't really want to do this anymore. 
Uh, my stepfather had passed, and I was like, man, is this how I like really want to live my life? Um, like, is, like, do I see myself in like this teaching career forever? Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I feel like I should be doing more kind of thing, and I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, I decided to become an entrepreneur. I went on this mission trip to go build water, uh, not to build water wells. I went on a mission trip first to build these gardens in Rwanda. And while we were in this country, uh, me and my uh, friends that was there, we was like, yo, we should start a water well project to bring water to these people that's in uh, this, this town in, in Rwanda. So the fact that we was able to come back, I didn't know how like, like water came out of the ground, like at all. Like, like I didn't know none of us was engineers, so yeah, none of this is like, like, bro, how are we gonna do a water well project? How are we gonna build water wells? And we don't know nothing about it. Right. But the fact that we learned how to do it, learned how to do it in a sustainable and an efficient way, so it was like way cheaper. Fire. Um I was over here like, bro, I can do anything. So it was like while I was in Rwanda, uh, building that first well, I kept asking myself because you ain't ain't that much technology around, so. Um, you just, you literally are just to your brain, your mind, building the water well. It was a manual kind of water well that you was building that like you just, you just sat there and you just thinking. So I would sit there and I, all I kept doing was asking myself, like, man, if money wasn't an option, if whatever was, I, whatever I was to dream up was to actually happen for me, like, what would you do? And I remember like going through down like the list and it took me three days to get here, mm -hmm. but it was like, I was going down the list. And I was like, oh, I could be a, uh, uh, I can go back to med school, I can become a lawyer. Like all the things that people would be acceptable with, but then it was like I was challenging myself, like bro, I can do something else. Like what do I really wanna do? And then I came to that conclusion of like, I wanna travel the world, help people and get paid to do it. And that's when like stuff just like opened up. And I was like, oh, I committed like that day that I was gonna like get into travel, like I'm gonna figure this out. And so I became like a content creator. Uh, our cousin uh, Savina mm -hmm. actually helped me figure out my uh, niche because people was like, oh, you need a niche, you need a niche. And I was like, I don't know what my niche going to be. And at that time, I was like, well, there's a whole bunch of like black travel folks out here because like, the black travel movement was moving. Mm -hmm. But she was like, bro, talk about your experience. Like, you're fat and black. And I was like, you are right. <laughs> I am. And I was like, I don't know nobody talking about. Shout out to Savina. Come on, shout out to her. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't know nobody talking about the plight of being just like a, a plus size person traveling around the world. Yeah. And then I realized I was like one of the only plus size people anywhere traveling. Uh, like traveling. Like, And I was like, bro, there's so many Americans that are plus size that ain't that Travel. aren't, aren't traveling like that, and they could be. Yeah. And so it's like me trying to dive in to find out what was going on. But that resonated, and then it started this movement, and uh, it continued to like give me that recognition and that and that uh to like build my brand, and and that's how stuff started moving. That's fire. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. I love that. It's something about it, we're. I was just talking to somebody else about this, but it's like the transparency when you're like real with yourself and you know yourself, uh -huh. and then delivering versus doing it too soon because it's not gonna connect because you're still figuring it out, you know? Well, and, and, and that's my, my thing is, is like to hear that, I like that, but I also know that like, uh, even when you being transparent, like you just selling to somebody like, bro, I don't even know what I'm doing. And people being like, well, shoot, we gonna figure this out. Try. Yeah, like, are you trying? It's, it's inspiration. You trying? I'm down to find out what this journey or how this thing gonna end. You know, yeah. like that to me, I think is a vibe as well. But then also I love how somebody was breaking down ego the other day to where it was like, you knowing that, like to do what I'm doing right now, to be the to be as successful as I have been, man, you gotta let go of a lot of ego. Mm -hmm. Like you really gotta be in this place of like, bro, I really don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like I've never, back in the day, I would've never had said, like I wanna be the dumbest person in the room. I know I'm smart. But like, bro, that means I want to continue to learn. Like, that yeah. means whatever room I'm in, bro, teach me what you got to learn. I mean, what what can you teach me kind of thing? Like, I'm a gleam from you. And so it's like, I feel like I'm a big student now. And and so from that ego part, it's like, when you realize you ain't, sh what can we guess? I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, when you realize, like, you really ain't shit. Like, none of us are in some kind of way, right? Yeah. But knowing that, like, I'm striving to get better. I'm striving, striving to, to, to grow 
and become a better person. I'm striving to have this discipline mm -hmm. to where like this discipline to get me to the next level in life that I want to get to and do things that people that my whole like family has never been able to do or generations have never been able to do and live these wild dreams. Uh, like I want that. So yeah. it's like people want to be a part of that journey and people like really start rooting you on. Like they start living vicariously through you That's true. to where it's just like, you know what? Well, you go do it, Jeff. I ain't going to do it, but I'm going to cheer you on from <laughs> over here, you know? That's true. That's really true. Definitely a part of the process is trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It yeah. definitely is. But you bring it home once you, you have your niche. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now, that's cool. Um, and like you said, so uh, your at name on Instagram is Chubby Diaries, yes, and, and that's also the name of your show. No. No? Not the name of my show? Yeah. Never say never. Never say never. I'm sorry. Yeah, never say never with Jeff Jenkins. Yeah. Never say never with Jeff Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Are we getting another season? Well, we're about to find out. We're about to find out. Yeah, yeah. Well, hell, you already done made history with, Come on. with the show already, Come on. so it don't even matter if you do or not. But just out of all the places that you did visit, what would you say is like your favorite, your favorite you know, country? Once again, we did go to Japan, and I got to do sumo wrestling. Oh, uh, yeah. No, so that, that looks fun. Yeah. That was a vibe. <laughs> I was such a fun time, but like, man, when I look back. Was that your idea? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. But I knew, I knew those producers like, <laughs> like, oh, we gotta, we gotta get a big guy. Like, if we're going to Japan, let's have him sumo wrestle. Hey, man, the show was, was like, entertaining. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It was, though. It, it was. was. <laughs> and, I, and I respect it because that was one of the most powerful episodes because the challenge was me taking my shirt off was one of the challenges. My Like, each episode, I do like a main challenge. Yeah. And... The main challenge was me getting in the ring with the former world champion sumo wrestler <laughs> who could like kick my butt, which he was. Like he was legit at it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then you find out one of the sub challenges was the fact that like, bro, am I finna like literally take my shirt off? Cause I don't. Like, bro, I know so many people, like just myself, like we go to the pool, big guys, man, we keep that keep shirt on. We get a tank top yeah. on all the time. <laughs> so I was like, man, I'm finna take off my shirt in front of this arena full of uh, Japanese folks. And then they recorded this. Mm -hmm. So it ain't like it's going to be just one isolated it's thing. It's a like private we, thing. We're talking potentially millions of people seeing this in the future. So I'm like, bro, like, this is like my seventh grade, like, like Fear. worst nightmare, bro, <laughs> coming to life. Like, but the fact that I was able to do it and then the fact that what, hearing people watch that episode and what it did to them, even little kids mm. who ain't even like, like really like plus size, but like not confident in themselves mm -hmm. being able to take their shirt off and be able to go to the beach or just not worrying about how it is. Yeah. Because I was worried about when that episode came out. Really? How people was going to respond and man, to hear how out of every episode that part like hit them more even than anything. Even people at my job were talking about that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shout so. out to my boy. Yeah. <laughs> he was mad at you. He's actually oh, mad at you. Big Mac. He like, bro. man, you doing shit, you making, now they want now more out of me. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they want more out of me. Man, <laughs> I, was, I was doing good. You know, now they like, oh, now you expect me to do it. Because now you showing out. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, But I want to do that, man. I want to inspire everybody yeah. to like really get out there. And I think a lot of times, a lot of plus size people, Man, they get really discouraged because they feel like, like I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Like this, this ain't made for me. So it's like there's so many limitations. And so what I'm trying to do is show them like, yo, like this is what you can, and this is what you probably can't do. And so it's like a lot of times it ain't really about what they can't do. They just don't know what they can do. Right. So it's like making sure that like, cause they don't. People, it, it really does suck when you feel like there's no options for you. Mm -hmm. But being able to give somebody an option, man, that really does something to people's minds. Like you said, that representation. Yeah. Like if you yeah. always think a certain type of person doing a certain thing, yeah. you don't even think you can do something Bro, like that. Bro, my show, like, comparison is Bear Grylls. Mm. Like, like they even did a show with uh, Chris Hemsworth. Like, like, literally, he was Thor and... Uh, <laughs> And yeah, Avengers, <laughs> bro. Like, so their shows, like, bro, these these fit white dudes out here doing this stuff, and now you got this chubby black guy doing it. You it's know, way more relatable. Come on, it <laughs> yeah, is just, what it is. But then again, I, I'm also just relatable. Yeah. Like, so you also bring in that perspective. Yeah. Like, you can't correlate with this 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 40, 50 year old white man compared to you can do with a 30 year old black dude. Yep. That's from your area. That's yep. your family. Talks how you talk. Come on. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's. And shout out to Florida, man. My Florida people, people <laughs> from Orlando, they was like, oh my God. 
Like, you mentioned, like, our neighborhood, like, mm -hmm. like Rosemont. You mentioned Orlando. You mentioned all this stuff. Like, I mentioned FAMU, like an HBCU. Yeah. Man, I know uh, old boy ain't mentioned it, you yeah. know? So it's like to be able to to do or talk about, like, black issues or black, um, like, scenes and stuff like that. Like, people are just like, oh, man, I love that. How do you navigate in a predominantly not your people's space. I don't know how I want to word that. Just how are you navigating the travel world knowing that it's, you know, not dominated by people you're like us. Like us. Uh, yeah. Like I, w I would say this, like one, I, it don't matter what space I go to, I'm always coming with energy. Mm. Like I tell people like, man, it is intentional that I'm gonna walk in with a smile. It's intentional that I'm gonna come in with good energy. Yeah. I've learned doing that can like open up so many doors anywhere you go. Now, the other thing is I've learned that sometimes when you go into some of these spaces and it's just you, you you shine quick. Mm. So you having this good energy coming with it. So now they over here it's looking at you like, bro, like they over here like, oh, hey, the, the black guy over here. Like, you know, like, cause I'm one of the only ones in there. So it's yeah. just like, it's one of those things to where um, I'm not saying that like, I don't want to be in like all black rooms, but I also, I'm learning the game. Like, mm -hmm. there's a game to this, um, to where, like, if I'm trying to get ahead, like, I don't want to, I want to go the shortcut way. Now, now I'm not saying I want to do it the easiest way, because yeah. the shortcut way is actually probably even harder. But, like, I don't feel like I have to go, like, like all the way around when I can just go this way. Like, it's a simple way of going. Yeah, and, be a good and, person. And I'm, you're naturally already yeah, nice. Yeah. You speak to everybody, yeah. so it's really... And it is, and but my thing is, is also just like, bro, like I don't judge folks, like as long as you ain't judging me, which mm. I know you are in some ways, <laughs> but my thing is like the energy or the level that I'm coming at, a lot of times goes past, like it surpasses like race in a way, like to where yeah. people, any human being being like, dang, bro, I really own one. Man, yeah, and you are loved. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with my own two eyes, literally people stopping you, wanting mm -hmm. to take a picture with you, and they do love your energy. That is something mm -hmm. that they, they always talk about. What, uh, I know you just won an award this year. Yeah, for like the like, third like creator time of in, the year. Third time uh, in a row. Yeah, man, for um, Travel and Leisure, not Travel and Leisure, I'm so sorry, uh, for the Points Guy. Points but yeah, guy, man, they yeah. do this like massive uh, award show for like all the airlines and stuff like that. And like, like, uh, hum like not humans, yeah, but like people don't usually win the award. It's usually for like the brands, company or something, the companies. Yeah. But for me to get that honor, like man, it was it was definitely a vibe. Yeah. And man, I keep getting all these like 40 under 40s for like my schools and like the Fire. city I'm from and all that. So it just that's just been like out of this world too. So where do you see yourself taking it? Because you've already you've done a lot already between mm -hmm. podcast, TV show, traveling. Like, what is your end goal? Man, well, one end goal is to continue to just. Like, man, I mean, it's just the beginning. Like, you know, like, I feel like this is just a, a cornerstone or just a stepping stone in, like, the direction I want to go. I felt like I wanted to get into travel and use that as my unorthodox way of, like, creating wealth for myself mm. so that I can invest in other things like real estate and yeah. uh, other companies and stuff like that. So me will continue to be, like, an entrepreneur, like, this mogul is what I want. Like, I want my own table. But I want to go yeah. build, I mean, I want to plant a million trees yeah. around the world. I want to try to help as much as I can, even with like the coral reefs and stuff. I want to be able to give back to our community, yeah. uh, but then also just like teach people like how to get out of poverty and things like that as well. And so all right, there's so many things I can do, but you want to know how you can get that mo needle moving? With money. Yeah. And so it's just like me making my own money, me creating my own wealth. Like I'm able to do more. Uh, that's why I don't have a nonprofit mm. because like with a nonprofit, you got to do the job and then you got to go fundraise. Yeah. So I was like, nah, man, I'd rather like go make money from a for-profit way and then put it, and then I whatever money I have, I, I can Invest. tell that money where to go. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd rather like just have my own money. I'd rather be the, the biggest person giving. I love mm -hmm. that theory. Yeah. Come on. What? Come on. I need to hear that. I Come like on. that. Come on. Come <laughs> on. I really do. Even though I do feel like you could just partner with a nonprofit. You don't have to necessarily. Oh, for sure. I like, don't. I yeah, don't. And yeah, I can yeah. partner with multiple nonprofits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause Instead you, of being the one created it, and I got all this headache and having to do the day-to-day. -day, yeah. yeah, like, oh, my gosh. So, yeah. like, that's how I want to go about it. But, 
Like, bro, I want to own part of the Orlando Magic one day. You know, like, the first time ever saying this in public, but I say it every day. I read it off every single day. Um, like, man, I want to continue to take my family on trips. Yeah. Like, I want to be like uh, Peter McAllister. I want to take, you remember, like, bro, he took his his five, seven people in his family and his uh, in-laws, like other, yeah. all of them to Paris. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, come on. Like, bro, all of us, like, like bro, everybody, come on through. Yeah. We all kids, you still going, you going to be in economy, but we going to be in first class. Like, <laughs> bro, we all going out to Paris, bro, and just vibing out. So, yeah. stuff like that, I think, is, like, dope. Yeah, man. Especially black people from the South getting that experience is yeah. different. Yeah. It's just fucking different. And they, they so country when they do so go to these places. <laughs> Ooh, what? What they say? Oh, Lord. <laughs> they want me to try this. What? <laughs> Smell? That's cargo. Oh nah. Did you take them? Oh, this sounds like a real experience. No, I have taken uh, I've taken one. Yeah. I've taken one. <laughs> That's With the reaction. Me. Oh, it is definitely a reaction. <laughs> oh, oh, but then they, the reaction also is when they see it's like when people see all my like Instagrams and stuff like that, they be like, Oh nah, bro. Nah, nah, yeah. bro. I don't know how you did that one, bro. Oh nah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Damn, man. Yeah, representation is very important. I'm glad we do have you out here doing it. I appreciate you. Yeah, of course. Appreciate you. Shout out to your grandma. Let everybody know where they can tap in. Yeah. Look. You can follow me all on my social media platforms, Chubby Diaries, and make sure you check out yeah, and make sure you check out my show, Never Say Never with Jeff Jenkins on Disney Plus and Hulu. Um, is there any event that you have coming up either? Yeah, I got Fashion Week coming up. Mm. Uh like man, we're doing this thing called Bigger Picture. Man, doing a um, photo shoot with uh, Michael Kors, and then we're doing like this uh, yes. runway thing for honoring Andre Leon Talley. So I'm like wearing one of his iconic like suits. And he was always elaborate, and he was a big dude. So uh, you're gonna see me in like this like like cool like like out of this world like like red suit. That's fine. So it's gonna be dope. It's definitely gonna be dope. It's gonna be hot. I'm it's gonna be dope. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to it. I really appreciate am. you. Appreciate you. Of course, man, I love everything that you got going. Yeah, thanks. Like, man, you represent the family well. So this is it's dope. Like, bro, we're in New York. I'm in your studio right now <laughs> on your podcast. That to me is just a vibe. That so, is, is yeah, yes, like, man, we doing this, man. Come yes. on. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Talk soon. Peace. Man, your intros are just uh on point. Thanks. On point. He was like, hey, Seth I was like, oh. <laughs> like, bro, I don't know anybody that started a podcast uh as smooth as you have. Thank you. Out of all, bro, I don't know how many podcasts I've been on I've been on live. I was <laughs> like literally like this. I was, I was just like just going. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of people be like, wait, are we? Yeah, if bro, you just, you just, I, I'm like, I said, yeah. oh. Because you want it to feel natural. No, it was a vibe, bro, but I am I was fighting. That, that was a tough one just then. What you mean? Uh, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Uh, and then that five hour energy I had, like, it's like, it wore off. I don't know. I think it's like kicking in. Like, I don't know if you ever had it to her, like, something kick in. So, like, I felt delayed. like the juice, yeah, it was like delayed. So, like, the stuff was going, but then it was like, I was hyper. Like, it was like, I'm thinking faster. Mm. So I was like, oh. Now you got to get it together. Yeah, I was over here in my head, like, all right. Because I would never, I was going to say something that I would never say, but I normally say, like, representation matters. Yeah. Um, but I was going to go a whole nother way with this. I was like, if you want to know somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you need to wake up and pay attention. Oh, well, my God. I was about to say this. <laughs> you know, I just came out, bro. I, I like, like that, though. You should have like, done it. where is this coming Pull the from? trigger. <laughs> bro, what? I said, oh my God, I'm, I'm trying to be on some stack right no, now. No, people need to hear that motivational, uh, mo motivation sometimes. You don't, but you don't know what that's from? Mm-mm. Bruh, Sister Act 2, man. That's it was a whole song, bruh. If you wanna be somebody, if you wanna go somewhere, you gotta wake up and pay. I know I did. Show young ass, man. Lord, God. Lord, 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 I know Lord, I haven't Lord. seen it though. All You've I never know seen is, it? Mm -mm, I, I, do, ah! I know that one record from it though. Joyful, joyful. Joyful, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, are they doing a are they doing a Broadway show for it or a movie? Oh, I, I think don't they're know. coming out with a movie or Broadway something. Broadway would be fine. Are you one over there yet? To the Harry Potter? No, no, no. Mm -mm. You seen it or do you even care about it? I want to go. Bro, I heard it's fine, and it ain't a musical. 
It's not a musical? No. Nah. She's a play? Yeah. Really? And they said, like, it's like all the spectacle. Because I didn't want to see it because I thought it was a musical. Mm. They was like, nah, bro, there's no musical in it. And I was like, I don't think there's no singing. I do want to But it's go. like three hours, though. That's fine. Uh-huh. I mean, shit, it's fucking nine <laughs> movies to cover. That's why I was confused. No, nah, but like... they said it's like a whole other, like, story. What? Like, it ain't, like, the same, same. So, uh, so it's like you getting something, like, new. legit. Like, you getting something new with it, yeah. Is it the same show that they're showing every time, or are they always changing it up? Because that shit's been up there for a minute. You know, and I remember when they first opened it. Mm. But that was not too long ago, though. Like, a year or two? Like, two years. Yeah, I remember when they literally, like, I was here, like, the weekend and open. But I, I think they might have changed it. Yes, they did. Mm. They just changed it, but I think they changed it to to make it, like, like condensed it, and they made it That's a little, brought the packs together to where... The movie's long as hell. Bro, so I the just watched them for the first time. Me too. No, no, not me. I'm sorry. I watched them a while ago. Oh. I actually watched them in the thing, but I had Nina watch them for the first time, and I watched them again with her. Okay, Alex and she was watching like, for the first time. Why I ain't watch them? Like, I should have been watched them. Because black parents think it's witchcraft. Oh, yeah, 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 all day. 